I I had to research all that nonsense because I wanted to get the best um, the best uh, SD card in for. Your yeah, I know. You know why? Why? Leave that in your pocket. Why? Well, I don't want to leave it in your car again. Yeah, it was. That was the most like embarrassing feeling, was leaving my wallet in your car. That was terrible. Yeah, you want to spend as limited amount of time. With me as <laughs> If you want to see two guys eating in a car, click that subscribe button. I love Brandon Marshall. You have an uncomfortable relationship with Brandon Marshall. I love Brandon Marshall. I'm a fan. Now, mind you, he's missed significant time in two of the last three years, right? But anybody who's saying sign Thomas Davis cannot use the Brandon Marshall gets hurt too much injury. <laughs> too much excuse. Like, you can't. I love Brandon Marshall. The thing that gets me, though, is that the Broncos are letting the captain of their defense go to sign Flacco, or to trade for Flacco, and their offense is bad. Like, if you're trying to salvage something, you got to keep your defense on life support, and you're letting Brandon Marshall go. I want you to think of the athletic freaks across the board if you put Brandon Marshall, Matt Milano, and Tremaine Edmonds on this team. Just for a moment, think of what that looks like. I will, while driving, close my eyes and imagine that. However, what I want you to do is this. I want you to think about the historical history and the connections that are going on right now, okay, mm -hmm. with the NFL and what goes on. Where did Fangio just come from? San Francisco. No, he came from Chicago. Oh, Chicago. He came from Chicago. Who was his defensive captain over there? I believe it was his defensive captain. Who was his defensive captain? I don't know. Danny Trevathan. The oh. Bears are in cap purgatory. Okay. They save an, like five or six million if they get rid of Trevathan. Right. Okay. New new def new defensive coordinator there. Yeah. He may want to style his defense this way. Broncos can pick him up, bring him back home where he started. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm just saying, but what... He replaces his captain with Trevathan. Oh, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. That's something I saw because, like, okay, Bears are in cap jail. Trevathan will save, like, five or six million. Mm -hmm. He has some familiarity with Fangio. Fangio has to deal with the whole team now, not just the defense. What do I want to do? I want to put my, my, my middle linebacker, my inside linebacker, who's quarterbacked my defense over there so I don't got to worry about it. That's fascinating. And I'm going to deal with Flacco on the offense now. That's fascinating. All right, so... I want to get and cycle this back to the Bills. But that that three, oh my God, yeah. Edmonds, Milano, and Marshall. Yeah. Well, here's <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the difference between Brandon Marshall and Tremaine Edmonds because a lot of people are going to say don't move Edmonds out of the middle, and I'm not saying to move Edmonds out of the middle. What I'm saying is that was just my phone. Oh. Um, what I'm saying is <laughs> you can move Marshall anywhere. Marshall doesn't have to play inside. No. You can he's move got him got to the outside. Everywhere. You can put him anywhere. Now again, he's had injury issues, so I'm certainly not gonna I'm not gonna dispute that. However, is he worth it? Well, you're making the signing of him redundant, right? Think about it. You've already got an inside linebacker, so if you bring Brandon Marshall in, you're not bringing anything in that you didn't already have. So if he goes down, he goes down. Okay, yeah. You've already, you've already got the position covered. Now you already have two guys that can play it right now, anyway. Right. So, now, so, so if you bring in Brandon Marshall, here's what Brandon Marshall does better than Edmonds, right? Marshall doesn't get sticky inside. No. He does not. Do I think Tremaine Edmonds has better coverage ability and better pass rush ability than Marshall has? I think he, I think Tremaine Edmonds will learn to be better in coverage than Marshall is, right? So I, will, I won't put that right out. But I will tell you right now, Brandon Marshall is nowhere near the pass rusher that Tremaine Edmonds is. Nowhere near. No, he's more of that guy you just stick in the middle and... Play sideline to sideline. The Broncos are 3 4. Yeah. So Broncos, a 3 4 defense. Marshall coming from there. Guards have free reign on him. Yep. So there's a guy who 
is very accustomed to not getting stinky. You right. put him in a four three, it's like be, he's on vacation all day. Mm -hmm. So yep. um, that's a, that's an important thing to know because when you have a three four defense, the guards are completely releasing the, at both the inside linebackers. That's a great point because we don't we, we don't really talk about how the three four impacts linebackers very much. Well, we did. Well, but it's bill, been a long time ago. Well, the long time ago when we talked about it was the reason why Kiko is no longer a bill because yeah. he wanted to run a three four and he was an inside linebacker. Yeah, he wasn't big enough. He, he can't get off the over. guards. He, he just got sticky. Over. So he was a doormat for the NFL. Right? He was the NFL doormat. So basically, if you run a three four front, three defensive linemen, four linebackers, the the nose tackle is right on the center, and the tackles are or the defensive tackles are on the tackles. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so the guards have nobody in front of them. Right. So they get what they call a free release to go at the inside linebackers. Well, if you're an inside linebacker in a three-four defense, you have to try to get off of that guard to make the play. Right. Because when those guards release, huge holes. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Huge holes in the line. Um, but it, it offers your defense a lot more versatility by having the two outside linebackers or the rush. Back, mm -hmm. Rush ends, mm -hmm. edge rushes. The, the, right. the names are interchangeable with the outside linebacker. Well, that's now. why, like, Von Miller is seen as an outside linebacker when really he's a defensive end. Yeah. The, you yeah. know, but that's because he's in a 3 4 A rush defense. end or he's edge right rusher exactly. or something like that. I mean, they, they create new positions all the time for these guys. I remember when the wide nine first came in. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you can't, yeah. they, they take an angle that's, that's, I digress. But then when you have a 4 3 like the Bills do, so yeah. it's four defensive linemen, three linebackers. Everyone's pretty much covered up because you're in the gaps of where in between the center and the guard, the guard and tackle on both sides. Right, your DTs are playing in those gaps. Yeah. So yeah. in a three-four, your defensive, your nose tackle has to be your best defensive player, realistically, okay? Right. Because he has to try to take on. He's a two-gap player, and he has, he's got to just try to make plays by himself sometimes. In a four-three defense, your middle linebacker is the stud, mm -hmm. Edmonds. So. By bringing Marshall in, who has experience playing in a 4-3, or has experience being an inside linebacker. In a 3-4. In a 3-4. Getting guys off of him is not a problem for him. So if you put him in the middle of a 4-3 where he doesn't have to always do that, you're going to extend his career. You're going to put Edmonds on the outside, which will increase his value to the team because he can, he can then hunt. And then you're going to have a guy in the middle of your defense that can call everything out. Well, not only that, but you could even move Brandon Marshall to weak side because he could he could play weak side. I mean, you, you, I'm just saying you can little I'm, by little you're putting Milano in the middle. I no no, no I'm, just, I'm just saying from a look standpoint <laughs> when you oh, look yeah, across yeah, yeah. the defense, a quarterback is going to look at three guys who could be playing who could, who could be playing inside, right? Yeah, yeah. But the the thing that we're talking about is when we highlighted them on the on the linebacker episode mm -hmm. was any guy that you want to bring in. We're, bringing in, we're not bringing in outside linebackers. We're, we're, we're mainly focusing on inside linebackers who can be versatile. Right. Okay, so we'll right now, on. like as you said, we got Milano and Edmonds. They can play outside and inside, both of them. Mm -hmm. Why not get another guy that can do that? Or Bring a Landon Collins. Right. Yeah. <laughs> drop down in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Make him a uh, make him a Mark Barron. Yeah. Big nickel. Yeah. <laughs> Big nickel. Big nickel. Yeah, it's, I think it's a fascinating conversation to have because as the free agency market starts to open up a little bit more, um, there's some there's some very interesting pieces out there. And the Bills are not out on any player. No. They no. can pay anybody anything. Um, but inside linebackers are typically underpaid. They don't make a lot of money. No, they don't because they're always in the wall. They're always getting beat up every play. Right. And that's very one noisy thing, in there. And that's one thing that I think is very fascinating about the linebacker position is that you would think, like we talked about the franchise tag happening with um, on the calendar episode. Mm -hmm. When you talk about linebackers, linebackers are grouped in as a whole. So if you ever need to, like, let's say you oh. want to keep Edmonds, right? Let's yeah. say if you franchise you, tag. franchise tag. Like, let's just say Milano is a perfect example, okay? Milano's entering year three of his contract. Let's say you don't sign him to an extension and you think, oh, that's okay, we'll just franchise tag him. Well, he's getting paid amongst all linebackers. So they're taking the top contracts of all linebackers, Ooh. not inside linebackers, all linebackers. That would hurt. Right, so that's why you don't see inside linebackers. They don't do that with linemen, do they? Do they? With guards and tackles? I don't think they, they do. I think they do. They, do? they do? Oh, okay. I All think right. they do. Um, so, you know, when they do that, um, it raises, like an inside linebacker, if you have a franchise tag an inside linebacker, it's going to cost you a fortune compared to what he was making because these outside three, four rush defenders make a fortune. Pass mm -hmm. rushers make a fortune in the NFL. Um, 
but you're not asking Brandon Marshall to come in to be a pass rusher. You're not. You're, you're asking him to come in, move around the defense a little bit, and um, he's one hell of a player, man. He's one hell of a player. I, I champion any move that makes that defense better. Yeah. And Brandon Marshall would make your defense a lot better. Absolutely. But if that if that combination happens where they cut Marshall, he happens to find his way to Buffalo, and then Trevathan makes his way to Denver. I mean, you're going to get out the tinfoil and make a hat? I'm definitely going to make a hat. <laughs>